Um, I was just going to do a little bit of a part two for my testimony, basically. It's my life. So hopefully you can relate and hopefully it can uh, help somebody who might be kind of searching to, spoiler alert, like uh, Christianity is what helped me. <laughs> so I always like to share my story because I feel like, you know, there may be other people out there who are like, that is not what I'm looking for, but maybe it actually is what you're looking for. Part two. Part two for me. Okay, part one was basically like my early life. If you're familiar with, there's like a few different like sin lists in the Bible so that we actually know what sin is. One of them is Galatians 5 and I think it's like 19 to 22 and it talks about all these sins, sexual immorality, impurity, like all this stuff. Um, so that's the part of my life that looked the most like that where I was like partying, I was drunk, I was high, I was like immoral, I was all over the place. Uh, my part two is I got married when I was 26, I uh, became a mom when I was 29, which was really awesome and had two sons in two years and I uh, was a stay-at-home mom for five years and I cleaned up my act um, you know when I got my when I got married I wanted to be like you know a legitimate like you know respectable you know everything on the outside was a lot better you know it wasn't like being crazy or anything but there's another list of sin that's in 2nd Timothy um, uh, chapter 3 and that is than what my internal life looks like. It talks about being a lover of yourself, I'm a lover of money, like all these other kind of heart sins. Uh, that would be my kind of part two, chapter two, and that would be like ages like 26 to 37. Just trying to figure out how to like, you know, be a good mom, be a good wife, do all these things. I don't, I don't think that I succeeded at being a good wife. I got divorced when I was 34. I kind of started to go through at that point like a, a seeking where it just was at a very um, hard, 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 hard uh, part of my life. It was kind of a dark time. So suddenly I had to figure out how to support my family um, and myself. And I didn't, you know, I was like, I haven't worked in a long time. So I went back to grad school, promptly got kicked out of grad school. I didn't really get kicked out, but they, there was a problem with my funding and I didn't want to have to pay to finish my PhD. I ended up um, getting my heart broken <laughs> in that process, getting a whole bunch of jobs. I had three jobs for a period. I was working at a vintage store. I was an intern for an image consultant, and I started working wardrobe on film production. So I started doing wardrobe for commercials. And then eventually I went full-time doing just wardrobe, and that was my most favorite job I've ever had. It was so fun. And then somehow this whole tarot thing came into my life. It literally was like it just came into my life. I, like found this pack of tarot cards at the thrift store. I had a friend who was getting into it at the same time. We would like trade readings and drink wine. And I met this girl who knew a bunch of people I knew who was a tarot reader and she kind of normalized it for me. She wasn't like a witch or anything. She was just like a normal, cool girl. One thing led to another and I ended up making this YouTube channel in December of 2014 where I started doing tarot readings online. So I didn't do any advertisement or promotion for my channel or anything. I just, I don't know, I'm just gonna throw it out there. <laughs> but I ended up getting like 7,000 viewers um, in a matter of a few months and I ended up being able to quit my wardrobe job um, and just do readings full time. I loved the wardrobe job but I had to work frequently like 12 hour or 14 hour days. I had to get early morning babysitters for my kids and late night babysitters. Um, when I did the readings I could just do it around my kids school schedule and be there for them which is what I wanted to do. Um, I actually made the same amount of money that I was making doing wardrobe which actually pays, pays pretty well um, in just working a few hours a day. But I also ended up taking on all this stress and all these uh, other people's problems and then I was having my own problems um, and also as I mentioned before there definitely was like a real spirit thing going on. I was developing this like twitch in my wrist that would tell me when I was on the right track in a reading like all this weird stuff was happening around my house and just in my life. Uh, I think there's a Nabokov story, Nabokov story about this man who just like makes meaning out of everything. That was kind of how my mind was starting to work. Everything connected, everything was whatever. It was like a little maddening, a little crazy. And I kind of just hit a wall. I got to this point where I just was sitting at my kitchen table. I remember it very clearly. And I was like, God, I just can't do this anymore. <laughs> just kind of threw open the doors. I was like, whatever you want, you know, just tell me what to do. I had also been carrying a Bible around for about eight months at that point, trying to read it. Um, and not getting very far. I um, was an English major uh, in college. I have an MFA.
MFA in creative writing and I have another master's degree in English. So my um, only two skills are basically reading and writing. But I was like, I don't, I'm reading this Bible, but I really don't understand it. I don't really get it. I did that for about eight months and I also read this other book on pure dating uh, by Joshua Harris, who's since become an atheist, which that's very interesting, but amen. So it kind of put this desire for pure relationships in my heart. Uh, it was just an interesting time. I was like, I'm reading this book, I'm reading, I'm carrying around a Bible. <laughs> my sister was so funny. We went on a vacation uh, for my, it was a work trip for her, but we turned it into a trip for my 37th birthday. <laughs> She was like, so I see this thing you're doing where you carry a Bible around and like don't take off your shorts on the beach and you know, what's going on with you? It's like, I don't know. It was the same birthday where I was like, well, I'm 37 and I'm an internet psychic, so everything's going according to plan. Yeah. Interesting times. Um, I asked God for help and uh, two days later I was on the playground of my kid's school picking them up. And I saw this girl and I was like, oh, I should go talk to her. For some reason, I just wanted to talk to her. To her and uh, we started chatting and I remember one of the things she said to me uh, was, I never knew relationships could be so hard. And I was like, girl, you are preaching to the choir because I was divorced and relationships are hard. <laughs> just started talking about marriage and relationships and all kinds of stuff. Um, and then uh, and we just related about a bunch of stuff and then she asked me if I wanted to go to uh, if I wanted to come visit her church yeah, maybe you know but then she was like yeah we also do personal Bible studies if you would ever want to like meet up at a cafe and study the Bible like at any other point in my life I would not have been into that but I had been carrying a Bible around just ask God for help and I was like actually I really want to do that yeah, the rest is history like I that was the jumping off point I sat down and started actually studying out the scriptures and one thing that the Bible teaches that um, I didn't know was that you actually have to be taught the scriptures so that's why I was trying to read it on my own and it wasn't working so you have to humble yourself to be taught you also have to check what you're taught it's very important that everything you're taught is actually scriptural but yeah so that was where my actual transformation began. That's when I actually began to have hope. <laughs> it was when I actually really studied out the Bible and made decisions according to what I was learning. So I wanna invite you to do that too, if that's something that might be interesting to you, to do a Zoom Bible study or a Skype study or a messenger study or anything. So let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Please join us on Sunday for our virtual service if you want to dip your toe in the water. Thanks so much. Bye.